Hi, welcome to see our arthritis at the Canadian Rheumatology Association and Arthritis Health Professionals annual scientific meeting. My name is Eileen Davidson. I'm a member of the Arthritis Research Canada Patient Advisory Board member, writer for Creaky Joints and Chronic Eileen. It's my pleasure to be here today interviewing Dr. Linda Lee, physiotherapist and Arthritis Research Canada researcher, and she holds a ton of other titles, but I'll let her explain her a little bit more about her involvement in rheumatology today. Thank you, Eileen. It's a pleasure to be here, and thanks for interviewing me. Um, well, my name is Linda Lee. I am a physiotherapist by background, and I am currently a faculty member in the Department of Physical Therapy at the University of British Columbia. Uh, I am also a senior scientist at Arthritis Research Canada. So um, a lot of the work that I do is to um, help people to be more physically active in a way that works for them. So we um, work with a number of uh, patient partners and computer scientists and health researchers to develop uh, tools like um, apps and uh, websites and, and some of the programs that help people to find a way that they can be physically active in a way that works for their lifestyle and also um, a, a better way to manage their disease. Wow, that's really great. How has COVID-19 impacted the field of research in physical therapy? Well, that is a very interesting question. So uh, we've been fortunate that um, a lot of the work that we do actually involve the use of web-based intervention with apps. So uh, what was uh, really getting a lot of impact from uh, COVID was some of the face-to-face -face, uh, component. As you know, you know, being uh, when you, when you see a physiotherapist, a lot of times we work with individuals, um, we do assessment with our hands, we, um, you know, with, you know, uh, um, teach exercise and, um, you know, some of the activities, much better being done in, uh, in an in-person setting. So with COVID and the requirement for physical distancing, of course, a lot of the things that we are doing clinically and also in research have to be transform into a touchless sort of delivery. Um, so I, th I think as you can imagine, at the beginning, there was a lot of figuring how things work, anywhere from um, how do you efficiently um, deliver exercise and physical activity um, recommendations when you are not able to assess the person. Per, uh, in, being with you, um, and how, and and all the way to how do you work with some of the um, individuals who may not be as um, comfortable doing telehealth, um, using Zoom for um, meetings. So uh, we all learned very quickly. Lots of protocols being developed, um, and and there was a lot of collaboration of people working together, figuring things out. So it was a period of. Um, intense learning, uh, great collaborations. Uh, we certainly, you know, made some mistakes along the way, uh, but it, you know, all in all, it's, it's been a, a bit of a roller coaster ride uh, with tons of learning. Now, as a physiotherapist, how has virtual care been for you? Has, what challenges and what benefits have you come across? Yeah, uh, well, as I mentioned, um, you know, some of the hands-on assessment skills, it becomes a little bit more challenging. Uh, and I think another um, interesting thing is that when you work with the person um, in front of you, you do the assessment, you, uh, we, we may recommend some exercise and then we can do it and then you can practice it together. We can be quite um, creative with the space that we're in when we're in the same room together. But when we are not in the same room together, sometimes we have to use our imagination as what we can see on the camera of uh, what is available to the person, um, you know, how do, how do they position the camera depending on, you know, how movable, you know, the camera is and, and the furniture and everything. So, so I think um, exercise prescription is a little bit more challenging, but I think it was also, um, you know, we got, we, we a, a lot of uh, my colleagues will also agree that you get better with practice in figuring things out. Um, it also takes longer to do one session. So um, imagine if you're in the clinic, you, um, you know, get the exercise and your therapist will, you know, put together some, you know, exercise sheets and, you know, hand it to you. And then 
you know, you can, you can go on. Um, when you're doing virtual care, you literally need to spend time to line up all the files before the session starts. And then you have to, you know, basically have all the documents, making sure that they're all, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, be able to send and share with the individual in a way that works for them. So uh, again, you know, so some of the um, time consuming tasks a matter of, um, you know, the, the new way of doing things. But I think once we start figuring things out, the advantage is actually tremendous. Uh, one of the things that I um, have heard from people with arthritis, I think, you know, also it was from some of the conversation that you and I had uh, previously is that, well, it's much easier to figure out, um, you know, a time for your appointment because now you can just turn on the camera and here's the appointment uh, rather than, you know, getting ready, you get into the car or getting the transportation, get to a clinic and you have to make Make sure that you know you're not overdoing it during the session because you still you know need to have the energy to go home. So um, the the visit in some ways become a lot more accessible for some people, um, despite some of the challenges that we have to work through. So I think we're you know maybe encountering some difficulties in terms of what we. Uh, used to do the way we used to do things traditionally, but the gain is probably um, worth it for, you know, some of the trans transformation that has to be made um, to adapt to the new way to provide care. Definitely some valid points there. I've noticed with the fatigue thing living with RA, um, the option to do virtual care has helped me in significant ways, but it's also left a lot of room for um, answers that I don't have answered. Now, how has it uh, the switch from telehealth and virtual care helped with your research? Ah, well, uh, one thing that's interesting is that because of the intervention that we are um, testing, um, a lot of it is based on involving a health professional and the use of um, web-based technology, combined also with wearable devices to track physical activity. Um, I think in b before COVID, we had a lot of people who were interested in this type of work, but they're already, you know, sort of, um, I guess, mobile technology or online savvy population. And we knew that we were not covering, you know, uh, there's a larger population that we had not been able to reach at that time. Um, with COVID, I think people start to um, open up the, 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 uh, their interest in trying out some of these newer um, interventions that are delivered in uh, um, ways that other than, you know, being uh, in person um, and, and seeing some of the advantages of doing virtual health with their therapists or with their physicians. And so I think um, we, we're starting to see that some of the research participants are um, probably the ones that we have not been able to recruit in the past. Um, and that now we're starting to feel that we, we're we making some headway um, to reach out you know, to, to that population, which is really encouraging in terms of you know, the future and ways that we can refine for better implementation. It always worries me that um, you know, when we make some gains, who else are left behind? That is a and, really good point. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Now, you presented at the Canadian Arthritis Research Conference. Can you tell us a little bit about your presentation and some key takeaways? Yeah, so I um, had the privilege to talk a little bit about the use of um, interventions to monitor um, symptoms and physical activity and, and some of the advantages of, uh, of doing that. Um, oftentimes, we, in, in our research, we've heard people um, feeling that they have more control uh, about their disease management. And um, I talk about a few of the studies that we recently published on um, using self-monitoring interventions combined with a physiotherapist counseling for physical activity and how it had helped to um, improve their uh, engagement in physical activity uh, on a daily basis, as well as uh, potential for better pain management. So, so those are all very positive things. Um, I, uh, in that talk, I think one of the key 
um, takeaway is that I think telehealth is here to here to stay. Um, I think that there is still a lot that we need to learn about how to use telehealth to optimize care, not to replace face-to-face -face interaction. I still think that face-to-face -face interaction is a, has a very unique space uh, for, for care, but with you know, the, um, the use of telehealth and some of these interventions that are, that are, that are available, and also with the popularity of, um, uh, of some of the uh, consumer-grade wearable devices, there's really a lot of opportunity for us to um, work with uh, uh, patients to support self-care, uh, namely physical activity, um, you know, living a more active 24 hour day. I think that those are the um, exciting things that we can look forward to. And, and that's was, that, that was the key message that I, I left with that presentation. Yeah, I, I feel like there is a call to um, help patients be motivated to be more active. And I believe that your research is definitely helping them with that. I know it helped me quite a bit. Now, what are your thoughts on this year's meetings theme? Collaboration, resilience, and advancements, and how can they apply to arthritis research? Wow, <laughs> you know, I was actually really excited when I, um, you know, saw the the, the theme of um, this meeting. I think, you know, um, with COVID in the background, it really, um, I, I guess, you know, personally, from from uh, from um, research in my area. Um, collaboration becomes very um, different things that we, we um, had the opportunity to, um, you know, extended some of our work um, to collaborate more with uh, people in computer science and, and also data science to look at some of the ways to um, interpret, you know, information that are being collected or data being collected from uh, web-based intervention, from wearable interventions, and really trying to make sense out of how do we use people's daily life information to create better ways to support people in self-care. I think that that is one of the most important thing um, uh, um, or, 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 or uh, um, the, you know, most important collaboration that um, came out from, uh, from COVID. And so I'm really happy to see that as part of the theme for this um, conference. Um, you know, resilience. I mean, people with arthritis are amazing. One of my graduate students, Jenny Lees, has done some really interesting interviews with uh, people living with rheumatoid arthritis and understanding how, they, how, how they've been doing during the time of COVID from the time when COVID was declared a pandemic all the way till now. And we have some really interesting learning from People, um, you know, of course, people talk about um, how negatively um, that uh, COVID has affected their life. But, you know, some of the amazing um, things that, you know, people are finding new ways to be active. Um, they are forming new groups on Zoom to do their physical activity, the exercise groups, and they're enjoying every moment of it, um, finding ways to deal with stress and, and anxiety. I mean, those are amazing learning. It shows the resilience of this community. So th mm -hmm. it's, it's really great. Um, you know, and, and I think um, in terms of advancement, well, you know, coming back to virtual care, if you look at the literature on telehealth, I think the in rheumatology, the earliest one was actually done in, in, in Canada, as far as I know, um, almost two decades ago. In the last 12 months, I think we've made a lot more advance as compared to you know what um, we were able to um, do and, and and learn from um, in telehealth in the last um, you know two decades. So I mean, like the, to me, that was just the most amazing advancement in terms of research and in terms of practice. Um, so so you know so I I think um, it's it's great theme that uh, CRA decided to use that as this this year's um, conference theme. Yes, I definitely agree. And now patients living with chronic illness are so resilient, especially in the time of the pandemic, because we have been social distancing for so long. 
even before the pandemic, because we've been having to deal with a lot of um, immunocompromised systems for a while. So it's definitely uh, collaboration and resilience, is two different uh, words I would use to describe this year and the effect of research. Now, for patients wanting to keep themselves more physically active, what lifestyle tips do you have to offer? Can you tell us a little bit more about operas and how that has helped patients during COVID-19? Well, so uh, thanks for mentioning operas. So operas is one of the uh, tools that we develop to help people to monitor their physical activity, the symptoms, the medication, and things that are important to um, their disease management. So the idea is that when people are able to see everything that they experience that, that, and the things that they have done in a 24 hour day over a period of time, it just gives so much more information for, um, for individuals to make decisions about what they do, uh, whether they need to go back to um, their rheumatologist for, um, for, for a review of the medication or, you know, or, or, or to, you know, to take comfort that, you know, they're actually managing well. So, you know, the personal information is very important. So Opera is, um, is an app um, that is being developed uh, through collaboration with Dr. Diane Lakai's group. So they've created something called the Arthritis Health Journal, which allow um, individuals to um, use standardized outcome measures, things that's been tested in research as reliable and valid to um, record their symptoms and, uh, and, and get and uh, um, obtain some feedback about the disease activities. In our first, we basically put all these really valu valuable self-reported information with the Fitbit data so that people can actually see over time how, wh what, is, what are the relationships between how they feel and what they do. So during COVID, um, we, well, so currently we are doing a, a study to see whether the use of operas with uh, the counseling of a physiotherapist remotely by Zoom, uh, whether it helps to improve people's um, self-management capacity and their physical activity. Now during COVID, we've heard a lot from people around, um, you know, wanting to uh, have a way to monitor their symptoms and, and to find a way to get feedback about the physical activity. So we actually um, open it up for everyone to use. So I'm happy for people to contact me if they're interested in uh, using the app. But to your question, Eileen, about how uh, some tips about physical being physically active during this time, I think um, with COVID or without COVID, one of the uh, biggest challenge for people to be active is that um, it's easy to set a goal, but it's hard to get it done. And what is missing is the step of breaking the goals down into a manageable plan. So that's why New Year, re New Year resolution sometimes doesn't get accomplished because there's a goal, there's no plan. Um, so uh, one um, advice that I would have is um, to Make sure that once you make a goal, sit down and start thinking about the details. What are you going to do? When are you going to do that? Where are you going to do that? When would you like to start? How often are you going to do that? And when will you come back and check back on the goal and reassess your accomplishment? This you know, sort of iterative um, process actually helps people to build slowly, get some small gains, and build up your physical activity, um, and and you know, and it also account for some of the times when uh, people may be having, you know, um, a down day or having a flare up that may, they may not be able to do as well. Having a plan to you know think through, you know, when some of the um, you know challenges come along the way, how can you still maintain your physical activity over time? So um, so I'm not giving you know the the kind. Of the advice about what exactly you need to do to be active, but it's what what to do in order to get that goal accomplished. That that's the key. Yeah, I think it's so important for patients to understand that what works for one may not work for the other. Now, who is the best healthcare professional that a patient can go to to learn to be more active and also create that routine and that goal plan? Well, um, I think a lot of health professionals can do that, but as as long as that health professional understand arthritis. 
Mm -hmm. You know, I think um, when we talk about physical activity, it, it can be so many things, right? Um, of course, exercise that's prescribed by an exercise professional, like a physiotherapist, like a kinesiologist, those are very specific um, yeah. things that you want a specific health professional to, um, to, to help guide you. But uh, around physical activity, it's really um, someone who understand arthritis, who uh, perhaps to work with you through the process of setting up the realistic plan and be able to come back and, um, and, and check you know, the plan with you. So um, there is no reason why physicians cannot do it. If, the, uh, if time allows, uh, a rheumatology, rheumatology nurse can do that. Occupational therapist is in an amazing position because they address so much about uh, everyday activities. Um, and even, you know, pharmacists, if, you know, there is an opportunity, you know, during the time that when they talk about um, their medication, doing uh, counseling, ask the question about how you, what, what, what do you do in the 24 hour day? What, is, what does the typical work day look like? What does a typical mm -hmm. weekend day look like for you? And then start to, you know, talk about opportunities for people to move more, sit less. And actually another important thing is to get a good night's sleep. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, how can patients get involved in operas? Well, um, we have the um, information at the um, Arthritis Research Canada website at arthritisresearch.ca. Um, if you go under the research tab, under rheumatoid arthritis, you'll find uh, the opera study information. Excellent. Do you have any last words for anyone viewing our video today? Well, um, enjoy the CRA meeting, um, everyone. It is um, always a pleasure to have a chance to, you know, talk to um, uh, everyone. And, and thanks for the um, for ABN and thanks for um, you know the the um, interview, um, Eileen. And um, you know, I wish everybody will have um, you know um, great conference and um, learn lots and be safe. Nice. during COVID. <laughs> until next year, right? Yeah, yeah until next In year. In person. <laughs> yeah. All right.